Welcome to the Big Schmaz. I'm Scotty Bender alongside the superstar Rob Schultz. Yes. And the big guy still quarantining here this week. And what is going on with Raw? I mean, post WrestleMania Raws have been just, I, I'm sorry, just awful. It's just like, awful. it's a mess. It's like watching the New Blood versus the Millionaires Club, but there's no Millionaires Club. It's like an That's episode terrible. of 1999 Thunder. What's going on out there? Wow. It's terrible. A lack of stars. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's the, you know, Raw is Cruz. I, I don't know what is going on. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, big guy? There's been a lot of Apollo Cruz, don't you think? Yeah. Like too much? So much. Yeah. Well, so I think that guy on the internet said he wanted to see more of Apollo Cruz. He got his wish. That one guy. And yeah. he got next to the They listen to their fans. <laughs> yeah. It, it, so obviously, guess, you know, without the big names, you don't have Randy Orton, you don't have Edge, you don't have AJ Reigns. Styles, yeah. no Roman Reigns. So they're trying to make new stars. I don't think it's working. But Apollo Cruz was a guy who was losing two on one matches like just a couple months ago. Like, why is he all of a sudden wonderful and unbeatable? Yeah. Right. And Joe, to your point with the new faces. I think this is where the lack of crowd um, response comes in because I truly believe I, I'm going to speak for myself when I'm watching wrestling. And if there's a guy getting a good response and you kind of, you know, you kind of feel, you know, you kind of fall into it, you know, you're starting to feel the vibe for the guy and they're just coming out and with no crowd, I, I personally think it's, it's not going to help someone that's trying to get over that. It, it doesn't already have a name coming in. Speaking of no name, what about that group that's Lena Vegas heading? What are they called? There's no name. No I name. think they're a good group. Yeah, no name. But they're a good group. I really think they, I they see are. a lot of potential. I do see a lot of yeah. potential. I like they're athletic. I think they got they got the charisma. Um, I think she's doing a great job. I wasn't a big fan of hers, uh, but um, I think she stepped up to the plate and is really delivered with leading this group. But don't they need some established character to test their metal against? Not Apollo Cruz and some other people, like why don't they go up against, yeah, like a Roman Reigns or? Oh, well, they will. They will. You think? Yeah. Yeah. I, also, I don't think there's a problem there because I mean they've they've been fighting with Drew McIntyre, Rey Mysterio, Alex. Yeah, Black. that's right. They're, mm-hmm. they're going after the bigger names. So the getting back to a, Apollo yeah. Cruz, why did he get the push when like? Ricochet is stuck in a tag team facing no names from NXT. And not even going for the tag belts yet. That's for the Viking Raiders. Like I don't know when Alexander and Ricochet will get the tap. Speaking of big names, MVP brought some tag team back this week. Shane Thorne and Brandon Vink get excited. Yeah, MVP uh, making a big yeah. splash. Yeah, he's got a I, long uh, history with uh, Rey Mysterio, <laughs> so he says. <laughs> so MVP, yeah, is is back on TV mm-hmm. without much ex- no explanation. Just he's doing the <laughs> VIP a, lounge, yeah. yeah, as though he never left, even though it's been like ten years. Yeah, and he acts like he might be. One of the greatest performers in the history of Raw. And I guarantee 70% of the audience has no idea who he is. He's balling. Yeah. No, good point. I was thinking the same thing. I, I, when I'm watching, I'm like, he he's definitely a fool of himself. And I, I, I barely remember him. I can't imagine, you know, people like you that are new fans and have been really following the product for the last few years are going to be like, who the hell is this guy? But what are some of the positives that you think has been coming out of this? I know there's a lot of negatives. I mean, including that commentary is just is just awful. The commentary is just bad, but it re- it really is. I mean, God bless Jerry the King. I mean, uh, is uh, how how would uh, someone who's never watched uh, wrestling, who was seeing Jerry Lawler for the first time, how how do you think they might describe uh, Rob his uh, look? <laughs> I would say maybe that he doesn't even look human, maybe like that of a doll, 
or like he should be working at Chuck E. Cheese, like an animatronic. <laughs> Something along those lines, maybe. That's accurate. Accurate. Yeah, yeah. He, the camera got a little too close for my taste this week. Yeah, I don't think his face is gonna snap. And I like the so king. Funny. Yeah, he does have an odd shape though. It does have like the uh, plastic smile. <laughs> like the Joker. Love that Joker. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Smilex. Yeah. I just, I just can't understand. I, I you know. Uh, I, I I mean I can't I gotta believe we're not the only one people out here that are are just taken back by the commentary you know he, he worked you know with him and Jr back in the aggression and you know he his stuff he got away with stuff and it was you know it was comical it was funny but he just doesn't work anymore and I I don't know why they continue to try to put a square peg in a round hole with him I mean there there are just a plethora of announcers out there I gotta believe you know one sitting right here that could step in and do a, a hell of a lot better job than him. They hit Samoa Joe this week, backed by popular demand. So they said. So yeah, uh, and and Samoa yeah. Joe, you know what? He, he's he, he's knowledgeable. He he's a wrestler, and you know that's he he, he is, gives good insight, and he's calm, and he just you know when he speaks, he he, he just is very direct, and I, and I appreciate that, and I I definitely think Samoa Joe definitely helped um, this week, but the rest of that clown show, um, yeah, yeah, whatever positives uh, Samoa Joe brings. Are easily negated by Byron Saxon. <laughs> yeah, like I don't want to, like uh, I, I'm just amazed that the, the creative just thinks that these guys are like good, you know, and because they, they take yeah. so much pride in what they put out there, and 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 they, you know, and I mean, who's sitting in a meeting and saying, yeah, Brian Saxon is just Brian Saxon is just outstanding, or who's sitting there laughing at the King's, you know, jokes from the, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. You did mention some positives that are coming out of this whole thing with less star power. I don't mind guys that didn't get a fair shake before or, you know, don't get enough attention, finally getting some screen time. I, I was a guy who watched Jacked and Velocity back in the day and didn't miss an episode. You know, and I saw, I Scotty, you you and I and Joe, I think we were at a house show one time and Jinder Mahal came out. I was telling you stuff, what they were saying about Jinder Mahal. And you're like, yeah. I've never heard any of that. I'm like, yeah, it's on. They talk about it on you know, the, the, the C shows mm -hmm. basically, but whereas, you know, they had one of the best episodes of SmackDown ever with the NXT guys, when most of the roster was stuck overseas for crown jewel, it's like now, like we're getting Denzel Dejournay a lot. And, you know, guys we've never heard of that we might never see again. There's so, the point right there. There's the point I was going to make. There's comes the issue because once things do get back up and running, which it will happen, these guys that they're promoting now and, you know, you're getting a lot of face time with are going to be gone. Not all of them. Some will cut the grade, but some most of them probably won't because is Dejanar Darnay going to take a back? Is, is Orton going to, you know, not get a spot because of some of these? No, it's not going to happen. So it's kind of a weird conundrum that they're in with trying to push these guys and then. Fans are going to get attached and say, oh, I like this guy, or they're going to jump on board, and all of a sudden it's going to go back to business as usual with the big names and, and things of that nature. So it is kind of a weird um, Not, not only that, that, the guys they've called up, mm -hmm. Ever Rise, Shane Thorne and yeah. his partner, yep. they're not even calling up the best guys. Like if they called up Keith Lee, Matt Riddle, Undisputed Era, they could be doing some tremendous shows on Raw right now. It'd be hot. People would be talking about it. So it's it's like they're making a conscious decision. Let's water down the talent pool, and maybe someone will rise to the top. Mm -hmm. Ever rise to the top. Yeah. How about that? No, you're big guy. Great point. <laughs> they have all that talent. That you're right. Just think when. When when they had to, you know, when the, when when they were over in Saudi Arabia, and they had to pull out that NXT talent to Raw when they had the live shows. Just think about the excitement; people were so excited to see the NXT talent, the invasion. That whole thing was they were on cruise control with that, and now they have an opportunity to do the kind of the same thing, bring in the NXT top guys, and they're not. And I that love to be a fly on the wall in, in those meetings for those decisions that are not being made. Mm. So it would be interesting. Hey, all right, what's uh? Move on to Dark Side of the Ring. 
Oh man, man. yeah, <laughs> jinx. Uh, so, <laughs> so let's I start with uh, yeah. a video clip. Ooh. We're gonna get Mick Foley's thoughts on the latest <clears throat> episode. Hello, uh, I'm Mick Foley, and these are my uh, quick thoughts on tonight's episode of the Dark of Dark Side of the Ring. First of all, I, I love the show, and while it's going on, I'm thinking to myself, why did I turn down the offer to be the narrator? That's right, Jericho. You took my job, uh, but you're doing a great job, and it's a it's a really good show. The lengths these guys go to on Vice to get the, the interviews is really commendable. Uh, whatever you think of Stossel, John Stossel, Eddie Mansfield, uh, their uh, views were invaluable here. Uh, Cornette is worth his weight in gold as a wrestling historian <laughs> and, a, and a character. And uh, uh, David Schultz was outstanding. So I had a chance to get to know David a little bit when I was setting up rings for Tommy D. In 1986, I saw David work firsthand, and he's top-notch. And then I did a tour of the Caribbean with him in uh, 1987 before seeing him for the first time since then, just a year ago. Uh, but he's a guy who literally gave up his career because he was standing up for what he believes in. And, man, that's uh, that's really admirable. So it's a great episode. It's a really good show, really well done. Uh, and I think... Uh, people come away from a viewing respecting the business more, even though this episode was about an expose. I think you come away from it respecting the business more and the people who do it more. And uh, that's no easy task. So I'm Mick Foley. These have been my quick thoughts on tonight's episode of Dark Side of the Ring. I'll see you next week when I am part of the Herb Abram show right there on Vice TV. Have a nice day. And... Yeah, yeah, man, it's Mick Foley. Bring him back on Raw. He'll get some ratings. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Schultz. I love Dark Side of the Ring. What do you think of Jimmy Snuka? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> it was... I don't know what to believe with that. Uh, I, I do... They, they've they all been really good episodes. That one, though, where his story was completely different than what... Uh, the other kid, I forgot his name, Tonga Kid, uh, was saying is a little startling. Um, I do have, like, Snicka pops up in the background of, like, all of these Dark Side episodes. I don't know if you've seen that. He, like, always happens to show up. But, um, yeah, his rage issues are something to behold. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was weird. It was scary when he was like, I could. Remember that part? Scotty, what did I, you think? <laughs> I mean, of, out of all the dark shows I've watched, it was probably one of my least favorites. How so? Um, um, I, I just wasn't. Uh, honestly, I, I just didn't really care about the story. I, I, you know, I mean, I, I'm a, I like Jimmy Snuka. I mean, I, you know, as far as an entertainer performer, but I mean, just to be frank, I didn't really care about the story behind the girlfriend, and I, I don't know. I just didn't really care. I, I, I watched it, but I kind of was kind of drifting in and out of consciousness. How about Dino Bravo? Yes, like the Dino Bravo episode. Uh, you know, just a tragic, uh, tragic event uh, with Dino Bravo. Uh, I was, I think we were talking about it earlier. The biggest thing I got out of it, uh, it was just it, the whole. It, I, I keep using the word tragic. All these dark side of the rings are tragic. So I mean, that's a blanket they're statement. Dark. They're all tragic. Yeah, they're dark. And I do want to just throw a shout out to and any fans out there who are watching this podcast and have not seen any of the Dark Sides of the Rings, you definitely need to do it. They're mm -hmm. actually fantastic. And you, you can be a new fan, old fan, never a fan, but um, you can you don't even need to be a wrestling fan to watch them and, and just right. kind of and you'll know, just pick up on the storyline and they're just really well done and they have some good, you know, Chris Jericho, they have some really good people that are involved in it. Anyways, uh, Dino Bravo. Um, I, I think it's tragic. What I really took out of it was I didn't realize it, you know, I remember international wrestling as a kid, you know, just reading about it in the magazines. That was the promotion that he was part of the booker um, up in the Montreal area where, you know, Rick Martel, Andre the Giant, um, Haku was up there, uh, Gino Brito. And, and, you know, they used to bring some names into the territory and then they, they did, he did well. And then Vince McMahon came in and took Rougeau. I thought Rougeau, uh, Jacques Rougeau was great in the episode, by the way, him with his shaved head, uh, was it was good. I was was always been a fan of the Mountie. Uh, he was just entertaining to you know he talk, you know told it like it was. Um, but it was kind of sad because 
you know, when Vince came in and started taking all the talent, you know, here's Dino Bravo, Booker, king of his territory, you know, the main guy. He kind of, he kind of played a Jerry Lawler character, like Jerry was in Memphis. Everyone had to come in and take on Jerry Lawler back in Memphis, kind of how it was in Montreal. You know, he was the big hero, the Superman. Um, the story I liked was that they were going to do a match with Hogan at the time, but Hogan, uh, they wouldn't bring Hogan in because they thought that uh, Dino, or excuse me, Dino Bravo would be more popular. They didn't want that to happen to Hogan, which I thought was interesting. And the fact that he had to go to the WWE and kind of give up, you know, you know, from going being a booker, running a promotion, now to having to listen to everybody and being told what to do, dying his hair. But like you pointed out, Joe, when we were talking, he made a ton of money and, you know, was unreleased and, and then, you know, got in, didn't really have a trade, didn't know anything else but wrestling and got mixed up into the rackets and, uh, and was executed. And I just feel bad for his family, but I thought it was, it was well done. And to this day, they still don't even really know who did it. Mm-hmm. You have that episode where they don't really know who did it, but then you have the other episode, probably one of my favorites, the Bruiser Brody episode, where they yes. pretty much do know who did it, and the guy's still doing birthday parties. Like, it's, does it does it really matter? I mean, if you know who did it or you don't, you get the same fate. Yeah. You're going to be scot free, it seems. Yeah. But uh, I just, yeah, I remember, you know, Bravo and, you know, I, and I, and, and, and I, I remember reading about Dino Bravo because, again, there was back when he was, you know, when that was going on, there was no Internet. There was no you just read about it in magazines and, um, you know, and nothing. I was never really a big Dino Bravo fan in WWF. I mean, I, you know, he was powerful. You know, he was one of those guys. It was OK. Fun to watch. He was big and stuff. But, I mean, never was really vested in his character. Uh it, it, to me, it always just seemed awkward. It always felt like maybe there, he wasn't buying into what he was doing, but. So what do you think of the latest on uh, Dr. D, <laughs> David Schultz, with a, with a T? Yeah, great Schultz. name, pretty good. <laughs> that was a good episode, too. Uh, I, I, I didn't know a lot of this these shows. I was A lot of it's before my time as a person and also as a wrestling fan. Uh, but I didn't know he was as big as he was. I didn't know that he had a, like a feud with Hogan prior to join in the fed. Um, I had heard about the Stossel thing before. I didn't know the extent of it. Like Vince telling him do this, just be yourself, you know, be Dr. D. And you know, he certainly did. And when you watch the raw footage or whatever, you, know, you can see him being Dr. D there. He goes, that's an open hand slap. What do you think of that? <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, more shocking to me after the stuff with Mr. T, et cetera, alleged stuff, uh, with Mr. T, because he and the Hulkster have different stories about it. Yeah, but it seems like Doctor D was the original dog, the bounty hunter. You know, like he looks the part. He's got a bounty hunter show. It looked like what? When was this on? Japanese. Was this on TV? It was a Japanese show. It was in Japan. Incredible. The Japanese. The Japanese I did see it the one the time. Bounty show. Yeah. Incredible. Awesome. I, I got to tell you, I have a lot of respect for him. I would love to meet him. You know what I liked about him the most? was the fact that he never apologized for anything he did during the interview. He still, to this day, would have done the same exact thing. He would have handled it the same exact way. He didn't make excuses for his actions. He did exactly what he was told. And the way he was trained, by, uh, as far as kayfabe, I totally respected that. You know, he he protected kayfabe, and I was always big with, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer in the kayfabe. It's great to know the backstory, but the fact how they protected things. Like he said, you didn't go down the roads down, down to, uh, down Show the road and have dinner. Yeah. To have, you know, dinner with your, your, the guy you just wrestled. But to your point, I didn't know him and Hogan were that good of friends that they had a feud before that, that I didn't know. Cause I was still younger then. And again, the internet, you didn't really know a lot of stuff. I didn't realize that they were great friends, um, going, you know, and he got him in the WWE and that was going to be the big matchup. But I, I, I was always a big Dr. D fan. And what was great too, was when he hit Stossel the first time, he said, you know, if a guy gets back up again, you know, he gets back up. And then he just clocked him with the left hand and just, like, literally just rearranged his devil work. I mean, it yeah. was great. Because I can't stand John Stossel. He's over. <laughs> and if John Stossel's watching this, this podcast, go fuck yourself. Because you fucking piece of shit. But, uh, yeah. And then Vince okay. didn't back him. Yeah. No, then Vince didn't back him. That pissed me off, too. The fact he didn't back him and stand up for him. But that's yeah, Vince. Vince is a snake. I mean, we all know that. Vince has done a lot of great things, obviously, but he's also got evil. Vince's name 
is coming up a lot yeah. in the show. <laughs> it's a business. A lot. Yeah. Speaking of businesses, oh. uh, Herb Abrams is the oh, yeah. subject of the next one. And uh, let's watch a trailer for that. Everywhere this we go, you can get a Herb Abrams story. SWAT teams are going to be knocking down the door here in a minute. Herb had squandered millions of dollars. I couldn't even fathom it. The money wasn't legit. I heard that he was covered in Vaseline and cocaine. It's crazy. You it's can't get go any dark than the story of the WWF and Herb Abrams. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know anything about Herb Abrams, but I'm going to learn real fast in that hour episode. It's going to be great. I remember watching UWF on ESPN. It was late at night, I believe it was on. And it, it had a lot of the stars, you know, they were past their prom. Like Bob Orton was there, Greg Valentine. Um, mm-hmm. uh, oh, my uh, um, I, there's I'm trying to think of the other one. I just mentioned the Joe. But, they, they, you know, he had a, oh, Don Morocco. So a lot of guys that were past their primes. He brought in. Uh, he had, you know, he had his own dunk talent, but it, it was, it was just bad wrestling. It wasn't good. Um, mm. But uh, he had the money to, you know, to do the shows, and you know, you know, it's funny if he had the right direction, maybe he would have had something. But he just, you know, obviously when he all the coke he was doing, he probably wasn't didn't know what one <laughs> was up half the time. <laughs> well, you said but he had, had the to, money, but I think that's in dispute whether he did yeah, have the true. money. Yeah, um, on paper maybe. So I got a little clip here as well from the big blackjack brawl. Oh, the last big event they did. <laughs> how can a guy be ranked higher than me when I taught him everything he knows? That's Dan Spivey. That's, oh. that's just your opinion. <laughs> 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 Spared no expense <laughs> on the graphics. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be great. <laughs> what year is this? Oh, Cactus Jack. 1994. Nice. Yeah, Cactus Jack was uh, a big part of this. Very cool. That is electric. Wow. David San Martino. I think Bruno actually was Bruno San Martino. I believe was a commentator for this. In the uh, uh, the first season, he was a commentator. Okay, he was at some uh, point, right? Captain Lou was also there. Yes. So this is 1994. This is like the tail end, the last big hurrah. Where they tried to do a basically a pay per view event on Sports Channel. Blackjack was his big acquisition. Well past his prime, probably, <laughs> at that point. Oh, yeah. Blackjacks. Yeah, this is definitely going to be very interesting um, to see. I, I was, I, I think we talked about this. I would love to find some old footage. I don't, I don't know who owns it or where it is, but I would love to watch, go back and watch some of this stuff. So this whole show right here, the Blackjack Brawl, is available on YouTube to watch for the moment. Okay. If you got right. three hours to kill. Yeah. Well, we are in quarantine, so I've watched worse. <laughs> and watch yeah, this. Ah, John. Oh, Golden Green, John Tolos. Yeah. Otherwise known as Coach. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Holding the microphone a little awkward, but okay. Uh, you know what I just want to go back to? I was really glad to see that Dr. D... Even after he was kind of blackballed in the business after the whole incident with Stossel and no one came and helped him, he did land on his feet and became one hell of a bounty hunter um, mm. and uh, ended his career as a bounty hunter and, and, and made his bones there. So had a show, I believe, in Japan, you know, kind of like he's like you said, the original. He was the original dog of the bounty hunter with his own show. So, um, you know, but I, I really just enjoyed how he was just a very straight shooter and really appreciate it. So we'll be right back. Thanks. Fans. Fans, welcome back to the Big Smile. Scotty Bender, Rob, Superstar Schultz, yes. and the big guy. Uh, some more WWE releases this week. Uh, Jerry Briscoe. Uh, actually, a furlough for, for Jerry Briscoe. 
again, a long, long, long time employee. I mean, mm-hmm. who, rem- who remembers the, the antics with him and Pat Patterson? Absolutely. You know? Those were good times. Yeah. The Stooges. Yeah. <laughs> the Stooges is right. But Those again, were, he's furloughed, so he'll be back. I mean, my two favorite episodes of Raw were the ones where, like, they were in charge, and then there was another episode where somebody <laughs> else was in charge. But, like, the Stooges had matches on both of those. It was just awesome, awesome stuff. Why can we have that type of thing again? Come on, people, yeah. get it together. Agreed. What about uh, also Kane Velasquez? Released, didn't really have much uh, kind of flash in the pan, not much of a career. Uh, you know, did the match with Brock and got beat pretty quickly, and uh, they started the Crown Prince or the Crown Jewel match. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, He's gone. He'll land on his yeah. feet somewhere. I mean, he'll he'll definitely end up in Mexico. He maybe he AEW. Who knows? But um, oh. short. He was uh, wrestling for AAA before they signed him. Yeah, they, oh, they, yep. they they kind of stole him away. Yeah, yeah. And I feel Matt like if he had been in better shape, uh, like his debut landed with such a thud. Like if he had been in better shape, you would have seen a lot more with him. Mm-hmm. I agree. Definitely, I feel like they had big plans for him and Brock. Mm. And I actually saw his match when he wrestled in AAA in that, in that six-man tag match, and he actually did halfway decent. It yeah. wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. He was did wearing a mask. And, yeah, he did. So I, I just think, like you said, Joe, um, he gets a little more training under his belt and gets into the right situation. He, he was almost being thrown into the the, the – into the spotlight like he was in the WWE. I mean, I know he's a UFC fighter and he's used to that, but it's a different realm in, in wrestling. And, you know, he was thrown into a, a high ang- a high profile angle with, you know, Brock Lesnar. It was, I don't know. It was, I don't want to say he was set up for failure, but uh, I'm not surprised by this. Um, and then lastly, Curtis Axel. Oh, the X man. I know. Axel mania. Axel mania. That bums me out. Yeah, I, it does. I, I liked, you know, he was, I didn't see the very start of Curtis Axel, but I did see like, you know, the most recent stuff with him and the, you know, he went from being a jobber to being a tag champ to an entertaining thing with Bo Dallas. And now he's just gone, like off TV, not even like written off, just gone. Yeah. Like, he doesn't get to say goodbye. Like that stinks. Come on. Do you think though, you would have the same feelings about him being released if he wasn't Kurt Hennig's son. Maybe. I'm not sure. I Mr. Perfect was like my favorite dude though growing up. So maybe no, that's why I have the affinity to begin with. That's how I'm asking because I was yeah. a big uh uh Hennig fan and I don't know if he wasn't his son I would care as much as I do because you know I, I like the legacies, you know, I, I you know I like right. seeing the sons of Russell. So I don't know if I would care as much. I do hope, though, that where he does land um, eventually, I think he's got to retool his whole thing. I think there's there's a lot of work that needs to be done with his character because I think he's gone through so much with WWE, the comedy, and just he's kind of been all over the place with everything. I think he really needs to kind of ground himself and, and just figure something out that really works. Uh, I don't think so, I don't think you can say that WWE didn't try with him. They gave no. him a, a lot of yeah, shots. They really yeah. did, almost too many. You remember yeah. he was paired with uh, Paul Heyman. He was yeah. a U.S. champ. He main evented uh, Monday Night Raw against Triple H one week. They gave him every opportunity. I don't know if he really had it. On, on the uh, second generation wrestler chart, I put him above Sean Stasiak. <laughs> <laughs> But below most everyone. Yeah, else. yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe that's the worst? Meat? Uh, maybe Meat. Deuce? Maybe Deuce is the oh, worst? Yeah. Is that Sid Snooka? Deuce? Yeah. yeah. Snooka <laughs> keeps popping up. And every... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Moving on. But again... Yeah, I just wish him the best of luck wherever he goes. I again was always, you know, always liked him and hope the best for him. AEW this week mm, continuing bad. their TV title tournament. Two big yeah. matches: Cody versus Darby, mm-hmm. and uh, Dustin, his brother, versus uh, Lance, big guy. Mm. So 
I last week, I believe I thought that Darby was going to upset Cody this week. And I really thought it was going to happen after he was, he did the coffin drop on the Cody. Uh, but then when Cody, you know, kind of rearranged his weight and, and pinned him as he, you know, caught him in that kind of crucifix pin, uh, I was wrong. So, uh, it was kind of an entertaining match. Didn't really understand the, I thought the ending was kind of weak. I thought it was a good match. Brandy, I don't know her personally, <laughs> but I'm just not a Brandy fan. I'm not a Brandy fan. I don't like her no. coming out there for her the husband's matches. She just is a distraction, and I feel like she's like it's forced to have her out there. It doesn't seem natural. It's just it's awkward, and yeah. it takes away from the match. And she got hurt, so she went to the back, and it had nothing to do with the match. She's hurt. Then she comes out and gives him a bottle of water, which then Darby takes and hits him with. I don't know. I, I just didn't care for the ending. Yeah. Um, so. That's but at least Cody that. didn't bring his dog out this week. So. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right, right. But I'm going to look right. forward to the, the, the him. Okay, go ahead. to the to the winner of the, last, yeah. the next match you were talking about, Joe. Uh, so Dustin versus mm-hmm. uh, Lance Archer. Mm-hmm. Physical match, beat up Dustin. Came down to the end, and I thought it was an interesting angle. I liked the finish, the towel, yes. the attempt to. Uh, QT Marshall possibly throw the towel in. Cody comes out, stops him from throwing in the towel, and then Dustin just gets destroyed after that. Oh, kind of like uh, what was that? Uh, it, 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 Rocky. Yeah, I, I looked it. Oh. Yeah, I was just gonna say Rocky. Yes, <laughs> throw the towel. Yeah, yes, it was. Yeah. It was Shades of yep. Rocky Four. Yeah, I, I couldn't think of the number. Yes, Rocky. That's what it was. When oh, Apollo that's the one. Yeah, it also felt win. like shades of uh, Brett and Owen Hart. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Yeah, that was a good uh, ending. It was. It was that was a good ending versus right the Cody ending against Darby. But it should be interesting next week with or not next week, but when Archer and Cody in the finals for the TNT Championship. I think it's it's definitely going to be uh, something I'm going to definitely yeah. want to tune in and check out. Um, I don't like Cody being in this tournament. It felt like when I heard the TNT title, I thought of it like the TV title. And TV title was never like the top dudes being in this tournament. They were getting the world title. They were getting the intercontinental title. They were getting the U.S. title. They weren't getting RVD's TV title before he was RVD. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? You have to remember, though, Cody lost that match, so he can never wrestle for the world title. Yep. That's unfortunate. I I was kind of feeling the way you were, Schultz, but then I thought more about it. And just that they're because of the fact they're new and they're trying to get some traction. Uh, and I, you know, Cody is champion. I don't, not Cody is champion, but him in the finals. I don't, I don't think it's a bad decision, quite honestly. I, I'm, I'm okay with it. Like, yeah, I, I, I think it's good. I, I, yes, okay. I do. I do. I see your point, though. I, I do. But then I'm thinking with a newer Fed the way they are, I'm, I don't know. But yeah. You also okay. look at their, their heavyweight title, does not get defended. Very often. Why? Mm-hmm. Moxley's defended it once. Why? And Jericho defended it twice. Why? I don't know. Yeah, why? Mm, okay. S- saving it for pay-per-views, which they only do like four a year. Um, this is a title that you would assume will be defended on a more regular basis. I like that. So, yeah. You might be, and, you, and I think you're going to see the MJF. Like if Cody ends up winning, you'll see MJF win everything. He, he'll he'll be a challenger, and that's going to kind of yeah. you know further that whole storyline. So I think there's a lot of things. I don't see where Cody, like, he, like big guy said, he can't go for that title anymore. So where is he going to go? And I don't think you, you got to have Cody involved in something um, other than just coming out and wrestling matches. That's just how I feel. So I think this is good. Um, what about the bubbly bunch this week? Oh, Fan has. Man. Another Jericho, home run. Jericho riding the bike in his outfit, his full yeah. outfit. And I don't know what you call that whole punching segment, but one the, my favorite he called one it was the Manitoba melee. Yes, but Vicky Guerrero. Oh, I don't know. I just, I just thought that was funny when she got punched. And she just started. Rah! I don't know. I really, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. The cameos. Was that Jericho's oh, yeah. father? Right, the hockey player. It right? Was that his father? Yeah. That's what I thought. Yes. L- Lou Ferrigno. Yes, Lou Ferrigno. Yeah, Virgil. the bubbly bunch. 
yeah, Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. They, 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 you know what? They definitely, they, they, yeah, they did a great job with that. Um, yeah. Speaking of other promos, Britt Baker thought that was happened hilarious. Tony Schiavone picking out his teeth. I know Britt Baker and her assistant yeah. there. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a Britt Baker fan, so I, I, I think she, she's, she's pretty funny. Um, but if you want to go the other direction, though, what was bad? Uh, the tag match, best friends, Jimmy Havoc, Kip Sabian, uh, awful. That was something you would see at NWA Upstate. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it, it did remind that's me. Not, and that's not it did a, remind me of Hardcore Hell. Yeah, right on, in Portageville. That's where it all started. <laughs> it all goes back to Portageville. Portageville, you know. No, that was just that was awful. No psychology. I thought Jimmy Havoc was going to kill somebody. When he threw that chair and hit Orange Cassidy in the face, I was oh. cringing. I'm like, what? Is, why would you allow him to do that? I am not a Jimmy Havoc fan. Uh, I, I'm just, I think that that whole thing just decredited. It just took the credibility of the best friend. Because yeah. I thought they were, they had credibility. They were, I, I, I think it just, it just ruined it. And I don't understand. It was awful. That's what I'm going to say. Awful about that. I just so it, it was sloppy. And yeah, very sloppy. Uh, no careless. Careless, yes, careless. Yep, there's a good. Idea. They have Orange Cassidy, who's one of the hottest acts in their in their show, and they totally misused them in that match. I know they did. They, they beat him I up, agree. took him out of the match. When he came back for the big uh, fire up at the end, it was like nothing at that point. It was useless. Yep, he threw the chair and it didn't even hit the guy. I, I don't remember. Really yeah. it was awful <laughs> because he can't throw a chair because he can't exert <laughs> effort. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, right. it was I a mess. The thumb. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Speaking um, of messes, uh, Money in the Bank is coming up a yeah. week from Sunday. And what Shouts. a new concept. <laughs> you got to climb the think? corporate ladder at the headquarters. <laughs> uh, when I first heard of this, it sounded wild to me. I don't know. I mean, is this going to be similar to like the uh, Bo- Boneyard, Boneyard Man? Yes. Yeah, yes. It is, right? It has to it's be. Ar- already been filmed. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, um, I, I, I got it. I hope it. it's good. Yeah. I have a question. Is Apollo Crews in it? Not anymore. Yeah, he can't be, right? His knee. They already said on Raw he was out. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm, I'm going to go in with an open mind because I kind of didn't go into the Boneyard match with an open mind, and I was actually very entertained by that match. Mm-hmm. So. I'm hoping that, you know, instead of me going in with predispositions and, you know, my, you know, kind of assuming it's going to be bad, I'm going to go and say, you know, let's just watch it and see what happens. And we have Bray and Braun Strowman also? But, I, I, but it, you know, it's it's a new concept, and, and it'll be interesting. It, it, you know, the times are calling for some, for change and different things, and we'll sit back as wrestling fans and we'll watch it, and we'll talk about it next week, and, you know, I'm hoping that it's, uh, I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping that I walk away and I'm entertained. Yes. We'll be right back here on the Big Schmaz. <laughs> the Big Schmaz Podcast. <laughs> Fans, where the hell's the doctor? <laughs> <laughs> we need a doctor. Oh, we do. We do. Yeah. Because it's time. For the number one internet <laughs> sensation, sweeping the nation. Oh boy. Schultze <laughs> explains it. Oh god. People cannot keep their phones in place. Everyone's so excited. Uh, Schultz. I hope it's something I've witnessed. Explain to us the god. pro wrestling career of Steve Mango McMichael. I can't do this. Okay, okay, so this is not going to answer your question. He played for the Bears prior to this. Uh, he went to University of Arkansas, defensive tackle. Um, that's not right. That team went to Texas. Um, so he was in the Four Horsemen, like a bad version of the Four Horsemen with, uh, I think it was with Benoit. And God, was Luger in there? I don't freaking remember. I hated Mongo, though. I was not, not a Mongo fan. Uh, Scotty, you were not a Mongo fan either? No, I, I was just interrupting. He was with Malenko. It was Malenko. Malenko. Benoit. Malenko no, Benoit. No help from the audience. 
No help from the audience. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say Malenko next. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of Mongo. Uh, I, I This is a little bit before me, too. I'm thinking he was pushed to the moon because he was a former football player. I know he wrestled in tights with his number on them. Um, I know he's on Wrestle Crap commentating, and the quote that he had on there was like, this place is aggravable, and I'm not talking about digging around in the dirt with farm utensils, baby. That's all I got, Joe. Okay. Hot button with Bender. Yeah, yes. A, a hot button this week. I'm sorry that a lot of my hot buttons have to do with the COVID-19, the 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 uh, the unknown enemy or the evil enemy. Um, hang on here. Lost you. And happening. He's gone. He apologized. Go. I don't think he should apologize. The COVID is taking over this whole thing. Oh. I'm here. What oh, he's back. I'm back, baby. That's yes. It. That's the hot button. Did you? <laughs> You're back. So again, my hot button this week is just a, a, <laughs> again uh, more of a public service announcement than anything. <laughs> uh, so with this whole, you know, the invisible enemy, the scourge. Uh, now here in New York, we've been told that you have to wear a mask when you enter a public establishment. Uh, so. I just, I guess, I don't understand is when I go to Wegmans, why the fuck certain people aren't wearing a fucking mask. Um, it, you have to wear a fucking mask. It's what they tell you. And it, it's, it's amazing when I walk in there and I see fucking people walking around with, not a lot of them, but they don't have a mask on. And I just want to like go up to them and I got to just, I just want to like, one of these, I just wish I had, I do it as an interviewer and I could just walk around and say, tell me why you're not wearing a mask. So I was in there the other day and it was funny because there's this guy in line, he didn't have a mask on. And you could see the people from Wegmans come over and basically scurry him over to the customer service desk to get him out of the way of everybody. He clearly was didn't have a mask on. She's like, oh, you can, you don't have to wait in line. There was no big line. And they just moved him to get him out of there because he was kind of in the middle of everything with no mask on. So I, I just just wear a mask if you should. I mean, I, I, I'm not the biggest stickler for rules, but I would just appreciate it. If, you know, when you are in a public establishment and, and they say, you know, wear a mask, just just wear a mask. And this isn't a mask either when you when you go like this, when you walk around the store like this. This isn't a mask either. I saw someone doing this too. Yep. This isn't a mask. Scotty, I don't know mask. how close you are to the end of this, but I've been nodding along with you the whole time. And my experiences with Wegmans have been similar. Every time I've been in Wegmans recently, I've seen at least one person without a mask. And to top you with the shirt over the nose thing, I saw a pair of people walk into Wegmans the other day as they were coming in. <laughs> Like they were coaches calling plays. <laughs> <You're> like, <"That's... laughs> I'm not kidding. Amazing. Like holding like a like a like a index card like over their face. I don't know I what is going on out there. I saw Sorry, a viral picture of someone. <laughs> I saw a viral picture of someone. I don't know what this lady did, but she 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 attached a rubber band to a to a sponge and she put the sponge over. <laughs> Desperate times, I guess. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I, I hope I sincerely even... that everyone can get a mask that needs one out there. Yeah. You can do better than an index car, better than a t-shirt. I know you can. Right. <laughs> That's great, the cover. But the girl was walking around doing one of these, like, not even cover. It was just awesome. So I, just wear a mask, okay, guys? Please why did, Why do they wear a mask but then not cover their nose? Like, I don't understand either. Like, germs can still go in your nose because you're bleeding yeah. through your nose. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe they're following Mike Pence's, um, you know, when he was, you know, visiting the cancer patients and decided not to wear a freaking mask. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> he stands up there. He's part of the coronavirus task force telling everyone to wash their hands, wear a mask. And this guy's walking around a cancer unit talking to people with no mask on. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can't make this stuff up. So just wear a mask if you're if you're on public and you're yes. going to be around people. That's all. So, yeah. All right. That's our show. That's it. Yes. <laughs> Always end on a high note. Yeah, but yeah. nothing sad, though. Nothing sad. Usually I end with a sad note. Um, no sad note. Big Schmaz podcast. Yes, there he is. <laughs> I could go for a big glass of buttermilk. I know that. Uncle <laughs> Ivan. Extra buttery buttermilk. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Oh, my gosh. Uh... Uh, oh, that's that guy. Oh, yeah. So... Oh, oh. <laughs> well, so, fans, we'll see you next week right back here at the Big Smaz for uh, Scotty Bender, Superstar Rob Schultz, and the big guy. Yo. We'll, we'll check you later. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>
What? We'll check you later? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is that what the kids on the... As Ivan would say, is that what the kids on the street say? Oh, and a oh. shout out to Pee Wee Castle if you're watching. Pee Wee Castle up in Toronto, Canada. <laughs> what? What did you expect to